I'm here with Kelvin Long, the founder of Project Icarus. This is a huge deal. You found the project. What do you hope to achieve with it? Well, really, we're here to inspire the public, first and foremost. That's what we're about. And we started this project in 2009, and we came to this conference, which is a fantastic opportunity to really share our vision for interstellar travel. But at the same time, we're doing a credible engineering concept, which is the Starship probe, which is behind us on the pictures. And we really hope to demonstrate that you can actually go to the stars plausibly in the next 100 years or so. What inspired you to start the project? It was really um, two things. One is um, I was inspired as a young man by Project Apollo. Um, that inspired me enormously, even though I wasn't alive when Project Apollo was going on. It was very inspirational. It was very though. inspirational, and I think it will carry on being inspirational for decades. The other element for me was um, the thing that the work that actually the Project Daedalus team had done in the 1970s on interstellar travel, and also science fiction. Writers like Arthur C. Clarke were a big influence on me, and they believed that you could, through the power of writing, for example, influence the world for a positive change and I hope that what we're doing with Project Icarus and the design solutions we come up with will have a positive effect on the world in terms of thinking about how one day human beings could travel into space. What was the biggest challenge that you faced when you started the project? Oh, well, first of all, it was assembling the team. Um, so we needed to get some good people together um, who were committed. That actually happened really rapidly. And, oh, really? Uh, really quickly. Um, I think people just loved the idea and jumped on board. And then we had to manage the project. Um, of course, because we're an international team, um, the communications is an issue, but we've sort of got around that using technology uh -huh. and coming to conferences like this. Who was the first person you called to join the project? Who was that lucky person? It was Richard Abusi. Oh. <laughs> Richard, oh, so, nice. So Richard Abusi, um, I talked to him about the idea, and uh -huh. I said, you know, I've got this idea for um, Project Icarus. Um, it's a redesign project. He loved the idea, and he said, let's do it. Let's start. And uh, we thought about how to put it together. We put together the public website. We then started to recruit other members. So there were people like Martin Fogg at the time. Andreas Teolis joined us, um, and Richard Osborne. They were the first few people that joined us. And then we got together for a conference in London in September 2009, uh -huh. and that's where the project was officially launched. Wow, and now it has come a long way since then, right? It's come, um, probably ex excelled our expectations. Um, initially, we were doing just a design study. Now we're thinking about how can we use the work that we're doing to go outside of just a design study to help um, think about um, designing Starships one day and inspiring the public. And again, that's the reason we're here. Also, you're the vehicle configuration lead on this project. How do you expect this to look? So one of the issues people often raise with the Project Daedalus study in the 1970s, it was very massive. It was like 50,000 tons of propellant. It was... Um, Not doable. Very big. Um, in order to do that, you would need massive infrastructure in space. Yeah. Um, so we're looking at trying to shrink the mass down. Um, that comes under the vehicle configuration module. We're looking at ways of uh, making the engine a bit more um, less stressful so that you can actually do the mission in a much more credible way. So the vehicle configuration is really about pulling all of the work that the other designers are doing together and integrating, integrating that work into a way that you produce a design that's plausible. And what do you think is the biggest way to get you know, the general public involved in this kind of project? I think it's through several ways. The first, of course, is the media outreach work that we do, um, just talking about what we do, and hopefully people will be so interested that they will want to join in what we're doing. And also, we're talking about alternative um, projects such as educational programs, because we want to reach the young children in the society, um, both in Europe and in America and in other countries, to inspire them that their dreams can be fulfilled if they reach hard enough. That's interesting that you mentioned, you know, the general public, you know, getting involved. Is there a specific place they can go on the website or a newsletter they can receive? Anything like that that's going on at the moment? There is. We have a website and you can go onto that website, IcarusInterstellar.org, and we have a newsletter which we send out to members. And we're looking at um, doing other things in the future to actually get people more involved in the project. And they can also probably send in an email if they're interested as well? Oh, certainly. We have a blog forum, for example, and we write articles. We talk about spacecraft design, interstellar travel, even the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. We have our design team running, writing those articles. And members of the public frequently um, will write into us and ask questions. And we will answer those questions. And the surprising element is that actually they tell us things. They teach us things because we think, hey, that's a good idea. We never thought of that. Let's look at that issue. And that happens quite frequently. So the public are actually already helping us in our design work. 
So really what you're saying is everyone out there should really just be getting involved and getting into this project because you guys are going to get back to them, which is great. Oh, we, we always reply to everybody who sends us an email or a letter. We will respond to them. And um, if someone wants to get involved with the project, we'd definitely like to talk to them. Um, whether it's just, you know, in a personal capacity of staying in touch from communication and just asking us about the project, or if they want to get directly involved, then there are opportunities and we're looking for new design members. How do you think projects like Project Daedalus and you know, Project Icarus, how do you think those answer the questions of life in the universe? A very good question. Um, I think the issue of interstellar travel um, helps to answer that question because the stars are so far away. The nearest stars are 4.3 light years away, which is about 270,000 times the distance from the Earth to the Sun. It's so far away. That is so far away. It's so far. And you have to think, is it even feasible for someone to build a spacecraft that can travel that far? And so Project Daedalus and, and Project Icarus start to design these ships and they start to show that actually it is feasible, it's credible. Maybe not in today's society, but probably in the next generation or so. People should be able to build these starships and then they can go across the universe to other stars. And that also begs the question, if we can do it, then somebody else could as well. Very inspiring. So basically the last question, um, you know, interstellar space travel, it's a realistic prospect at this point. You know, what are the front runner methods that you guys are going to use to achieve that? So currently we're looking mainly at fusion and that's our project requirement. Um, the engine has to be around 80 to 90% fusion powered. Um, but it's not the only way that you could one day reach the stars. There are proposals for using matter and antimatter annihilation reactions, for example. There is proposals for using um, uh, laser powered uh, ramjets or laser powered cells or even solar cells themselves. There are lots of different ways of doing it. So we focused on one issue mainly to help us to direct our program plan to deliver a credible design because otherwise we could be doing this for years, right? So um, <laughs> We don't need to add any more time exactly. to this project. <laughs> yeah, but at the same time, we are looking at alternative propulsion schemes because about 10 to 20 percent of our um, propulsion can be alternative methods to help us and that could be a solar cell for example or a nuclear thermal engine just to get it outside the solar system and so we're actually engaging with people across the community and it's not just about fusion. Well you know everyone out there really appreciates the work that you guys are putting into this so keep up the good work thank you so much for chatting with us today okay, thank you very and much. I look forward to hearing a lot more from you. Excellent.